I can make it through this video intro without my rooster cockadoodle doing or my chickens pooping all over the absolutely stunning stairs that I just made. Next up will be a fence to keep them point proven. Next up will be a fence to keep them out. But for now, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made these stunning stairs and I made the stamp for the front of them myself. got to building the mold first. Now that I know that it works, I do wish I would have made my stairs a little bit longer or twice as long, but that's okay. I will know for next time. I was just scared to build a six foot long mold, attempt it, and then I have this massive hunk of concrete in my backyard and it looks terrible. So I promise you this will work. Take the risk and go a bit bigger. When the form was built, I took drywall mud and I covered the bottom of the mold. I wasn't sure what else to use and I actually might try spray foam next time because I do have another area to put a set of stairs that's not going to be visible to these ones. So if they look different, it's totally fine. Um, the spray foam you can actually carve out. I will post a video when I do that because now that I have it on my mind, I will probably do it pretty soon. I spread the drywall mud on pretty thick in some areas and then pretty well non-existent in others to make sure that I got lots of divots in the mold. Just to try and make it look like a real rock. That took a few hours to dry. I set it outside and then I mixed up the silicone mold. I bought this two-part mold on Amazon last year with this project in mind, but I never got around to it. I will link it below though, because the one I bought did exactly six inches by 36 inches with nothing left to spare. So make sure whatever mold you buy, whatever amount you buy, you have enough to pour in one pour. I had to dry for about five hours before I could take it out of the mold. So I'm going to walk you through how we prepped for where the stairs were going. So this is where I want to put the set of stairs. It's about a three foot tall bank up to the chicken coop. My larger plans later on, which I will document, are the pool deck, a fence around it, a full concrete patio. But for now, I am tired of myself and my family slipping down this hill, especially when it rains. Plus, it's just going to make the space look a lot prettier. This is exactly where I thought I should have made the stairs longer, but I will show you how I fix that later on with landscaping. So I'm marking out where we're going to move another boulder so that we have one on either side of the stairs, just to give it a bit more of a symmetrical look. We do have an excavator for our business, so it made it much easier and about five minutes to cut the bank back. This can absolutely be done with a shovel though, especially if the spot you're putting your stairs in is not that large. This is so funny. I feel like the chickens think the excavator is their mama. Whenever we turn it on, they flock to it. But it's because we dig up the ground, then the worms and the bugs come and they're there to eat it. So it's just funny to watch them frolic behind it like, where's our food? Anyway, we have a ton of excess gravel from the driveway extension, which is also linked on my channel, and the garage workshop that I'm going to be building behind us to create more content and consistent DIY videos. So we scooped up some of that and brought it back to the base. Again, you can do this with a shovel. Don't let the excavator deter you from this project. Just being nine months pregnant makes it a little bit easier to have that equipment. We have big O drainage underneath where the steps are going, so we wanted to make sure that we had four inches of gravel to set down on top of it so that the water that runs behind it and around it can get to the big O. Once it's leveled out, I brought the form over that I built. It's simple. It's 36 inches long to the front to fit the mold and 24 inches deep to fit the next step. I placed that on top of the rock and then I leveled it out. If there are any gaps underneath though, the concrete will spill out. So just take a handful of rocks and put it inside and outside of the form before you pour. All of this took a few hours and that meant that my stamp was dry and ready to take out of the form. The directions said about five hours, but it was actually only about three and I could poke and I could tell that it was ready to come out. I think it dried as fast as it did because of 
the weather. So I took the screws off of the form and I slowly removed the silicone to reveal the stamp. Holy crap, it actually worked. Once I rinsed off the drywall that was stuck in the small grooves, the stamp looked really cool and it got me so fired up to keep working in this extreme heat. I'm literally ready to pop, but I have to get these done and I'm honestly really impressed with how the stamp turned out and that my idea actually worked. So I was ready to pour the first step, but I have to place the concrete stamp at the front of the form first. I used little clamps to keep it in place until there was enough concrete to hold it there against the wood. I had some extra black grout laying around from our laundry room project, which again, linked on my channel, and I have no plans of using black grout in the near future that I thought it would be a great add in to get the concrete a little bit darker. As well as I had a ton of extra pigmented release agent, which I used for the front concrete walkway. Again, I have that linked. This is one of my first major concrete projects, actually was the first, and I'm so proud of how this one turned out. So if you wanna go check that video out, I absolutely suggest that you do. I do step by step how to because every video that I found online was someone professional overviewing their work and sort of just briefly explaining what to do. Um, so I made a video for beginners, homeowners, and people who've never actually used concrete before. So go check that out. So put those two things in the concrete to make it a little bit darker. Not sure if it will work, but once I mix it up, I cut my wire mesh to fit inside the form a little bit shorter, about an inch, so that the form didn't have any wire poking out once I removed the wood. My step, once again, is 36 inches wide, 24 inches in length, and six inches deep, and it took six full bags of concrete, almost exactly. So two things before people come at me in the comments. The mesh is laid down and you're gonna see me pull it up every now and then and I'll stop pulling it up once the concrete reaches about half of the depth. The mesh should lay halfway in between. And you're probably gonna ask, why didn't I get it delivered? Why didn't I use a mixer? For one, I didn't know if it was going to work, so I wasn't going to be wasting money on delivery. And the step is so small that the delivery fee would not be even worth it, especially because I'm doing one at a time, specifically stamping them because of the look I'm trying to get. Number three, I wanted to show you that you can absolutely do this yourself with manual labor and get the results of beautiful custom stairs in the city without large equipment. So I'm trying to do as much as possible fully by hand. For reference, I mixed two bags at a time in my wheelbarrow and the entire mixing process of six bags took only about 45 minutes. Once the concrete starts to set up, now you do what's called screeding it. This is where you take a straight edge and shuffle it over the top to bring the water to the surface. This allows for a much smoother finish, whether you're going to broom the top of it, leave it as is, or stamp it, but this will make your concrete smoother. And the rocks will all eventually fall down underneath the surface. As soon as you start shaking it, you're gonna see them drop. A lot of people asked me in the comments on my previous concrete videos, how do I know when something is ready to stamp? And it's when the appearance of water is gone, there should be no water on top. And I learned that lesson in the walkway video. So I took more concrete release powder once the water was gone and I threw it over top because I do plan on stamping the top of these stairs, but I'm not stamping them with the stamp that I used out front. I'm going to use my technique with a bag to make it look like stone. So what is the plastic bag technique you ask? It's literally a garbage bag filled with water that I put down on top of the step. I make sure to put it down sloppy so that there are creases in the bottom of the bag and the weight of the water will push it down and you can physically push it down if you want a bit more of a dramatic look. When you pull it up, you get the lines that are like on the top of natural slate stone. You can use this effect as dramatically or as lightly as you want. And because I knew that the front was stamped, I just didn't want to leave the top looking like concrete. I wanted some definition in there as well. Then I empty the water and in spots where I want a bit more definition, I use the palm of my hand with the bag creased up and I push down harder. It's, it's the only way I can really explain it, but I promise you it works. That is the best way that I can explain the plastic bag technique. I don't really know how I came up with it. Um, I just thought about how do I get creases in the top of the concrete walkway because I only had one stamp and I didn't want it to look repetitive and this really works. 
24 hours later, you can remove the form by just unscrewing the screws and slowly peeling it off. I did notice yesterday, that's what this video is, that when I was pouring the step, I probably should have made the form about half an inch shorter than the stamped front because I almost had what looked like a lip of concrete that flattened over the top. And the next day when I peeled it off, that's exactly what was there. But the concrete is still considered green for the first few days and it's really fragile, which works in this situation. And because I'm trying to make it look like stone, I just chipped away at it and learned that for the next set, I'm going to pull the silicone up from the form. Other than that, the way the first step turned out, I could not wait to get to the others. As soon as I rinsed off the powder from the release agent, if I couldn't have gotten my reaction on video, I was literally dancing, pregnant and all. So that meant getting to step number two right away because I'm so excited to finish. And now that I know the entire process works, I'm good to go. Let's do this. So for step number two, we got gravel into the back of step number one. And we're going to do that with every step going uphill, making sure that the gravel comes to the back of your first step. I washed the form off. I put it back together and I placed the rebuilt form on top of step number one with about a six inch overlap. I did not tie the stairs together with bolts or rebar because my thought was if we ever needed to move them, I didn't want them to crack and we can remove them one by one because they're technically different pores. So eventually they will release from each other. You see the indents on that first step and how nice it looks. I am so excited to stain them even darker because the grout and the release powder did work, but I'm going to get a dark stain for these as well. So I rinsed off the silicone stamp and it was super easy to get clean. This time when I did the stairs though, I flipped it so that the stairs aren't completely identical. I overlapped the second stair by seven inches which still gave us plenty of foot room i also noticed that there was a little gap where the concrete and the form met so i put some caulking in there to avoid any concrete drainage you'll also notice that i use shims in certain areas to create less of a straight square front so i put the shims behind the stamp so that it'll just give it more of a natural stone look I stamped it with my bag technique and 24 hours later, I took the mold off and it was so nice and starting to look like some real stone steps. With step number three and number four, I repeated the same process and every single time I took the form off, it's like it was the first step all over again. It just looked better and better. I rinsed it all off and now we are able to get to the landscaping because I do find these stairs a little narrow for the size of our backyard. If I had my time back, I would probably make them four and a half or five feet wide, maybe even six. But I really didn't know that it was going to work and I also didn't want to waste concrete or time, especially being this pregnant. But now that I know and I'm showing you it works, absolutely make yours bigger. We got the big rocks in place and I wanted to plant some perennials in the gaps of the rock. Perennials so that they grow back every year and I don't have to tend to them as often. But I knew the dirt would eventually wash away. So my mom gave me a really great tip to use coconut fiber. You can buy it at most garden centers and cut it to the size that you need. It holds the dirt. It also holds water really well and it won't wash away. I'll let you know next year when I do a recap of this project. When I step back and look at what the bank used to look like just one year ago, I'm absolutely floored. I'm really excited to show you guys that you don't have to tackle your entire space in one go. Take it one small project at a time and eventually it will all come together. We're going to continue the rock wall the entire way, add some fencing, a pool, gardens, and even a water feature, but all in due time. So make sure that you follow along because I will be videoing how we did it all ourselves. Thanks for watching.